This video is about using the autocorrelation function in the FPOD app. Um, it's quite useful, particularly for telling you the typical residency time of animals at a site and, and of working out whether cycles that you see in the data are tidal or diurnal. So here's some data from um, the United Arab Emirates, thanks to Ada Natoli. And when you look at the lowest panel, you can see there's definitely some periodicity there. It looks like it might be days, and there are sort of strange abrupt shifts in the distribution of frequencies. And when you look at this green line, this is the operational threshold of the pod, it is stepping up and down. So that threshold is kind of confusing the picture as to what the, um, the pattern through the day might be of click numbers because it's basically trying to control them. Um, so there is a way we can get around this, which is we go to the filters and we filter the clicks by amplitude and say we look only at clicks um, of 200 or above so moderately loud clicks and we do um, show from start again um, so the the black line down here is now much lower than it was in fact i'm going to stop that and make it show it to us um, at a much higher level so that we can we can see it more easily um okay so these louder clicks are less affected by the changes in the um <clears throat> the operational threshold within the pod and you begin to see these these cycles um and the question is, is going to be are they tidal which perhaps is not such a likely um, proposition in the gulf there or diurnal and um, while that's drawing itself we, we will just look at um, the formula for the autocorrelation so it's this impressive formula here from the analysis of time series by Chris Chatfield. Um, and this uh, account, this is in the CPOD software manual. So that has got quite a good description of the autocorrelation function and what it does for you. Um, and what we'll look at with this data is this process of finding the residency time of animals. Here, um, it's used to look at um, at longer cycles. So it's got a, a 30 minute time bin. And what you, you see is that the correlation at one day is not exact. So it doesn't fit 24 hours. At two days, the offset is even bigger. At three days, it's bigger. So this is actually a tidal cycle that's going on because it's drifting with the days and if you, if you recalculate it using um quarter tide bins then it matches up exactly okay and and that's the formula so um <clears throat> we'll now do this for the the data here so you, you have to um, well, first of all, we'll, we'll look at this residency time. Step one is you, you choose a bin size. So for a short-term correlation like residency time, you want to pick one minute. You choose a file. Select this file for action. You go to the display page and you click on auto correlation. Okay, so this is actually finless porpoises. And when the offset in time is zero, whoops, 
the correlation is 1.0, so it's perfect. And what this autocorrelation does is effectively it takes every minute and puts its number of porpoise clicks and then it has the same list next to it and when they're exactly starting at the same point the correlation is perfect they're the same list but when you move the the second one down one minute the correlation is um, across the two is reduced and when it gets down to being offset by 10 minutes there's still a correlation that doesn't disappear until 60 minutes but it's no longer statistically significant so the statistically significant duration which they match is up to an 11 minute offset so that's quite a good measure of the um residency time of the finless porpoises so this uh, arrow here restores it so let's now look at the bottlenose dolphins that visit the same site autocorrelation okay so that's quite different they're got a their statistical significance ends at about 105 minutes just over two hours there's no correlation at all so they make much longer visits so this is definitely the the neatest way and most accurate way to get a measure of residency time um but we also want to look at the um the correlation in the the fp1 file the raw data so that will be shown down here so i'll do select this file for action and we'll maybe do that on one hour um okay display page auto correlation um so this uh, we've still got that filter going for clicks louder than 200 actually that will have been affecting the dolphins and porpoises um probably not a lot but um it would be worth doing it again without that filter in place for them might slightly increase the residency time um <clears throat> okay so that formula i showed you is actually very slow to calculate and this is doing it very very fast <laughs> because it skips bins into which the numbers we put if any of them are zero okay so here it comes okay so this is very clear now it's exactly on the the one day two day three days here we are 23 days ahead you saw this very strong correlation so you've got something that makes sounds either at night or in the day and um if you want to find out what that happened what that is you might do dl number of clicks here yeah let's just um graph that um and it'll tell us so the autocorrelation doesn't tell us whether you've got more clicks in the day or the night um, or some more complicated pattern it just says at any point of time you're likely to have a similar number of clicks 24 hours ahead 48 um, and so on um, okay and that's showing us a peak in the early morning but not in the evening that's quite an unusual pattern um okay and a lot a lot of these patterns occur they've been called sort of chorusing and in general we know very little about them when you see a tidal uh, autocorrelation you kind of know that it's um uh it's going to be relating to the current moving sediments or attracting animals um yeah, and you can see the frequency rises slightly at the time there are more clicks that's 
sort of almost an artifact of the processing, but okay. So that was a very quick view of autocorrelation, and um, I, I hope it was helpful.